welcome back to the news at 10, coming to you live from Abuja. The Kaduna State Police Command says members of Islamic Movement of Nigeria have shot two of his officers during the clash in the state capital. Members of the movement had embarked on a protest to demand the release of their leader, Sheikh Ibrahim El Zagzaki, when policemen allegedly fired tear gas at them in an effort to disperse what was described as an unlawful assembly. The protest is coming a day to the trial of the leader of the movement, Sheikh El Zabzake, by the Kaduna State Government over his alleged involvement in breach of public peace and murder. The peaceful protest was going on. The police just came from behind and opened fire with life rounds. These are people carrying placards. Zabzake is not a killer. We don't uh, we know to impunity and just these are just the placards they are carrying calling on the government to be do justice. And these people, policemen came there and started shooting at them. Several people have been injured as a result of uh, the shootings by the police. They attacked from the behind. Later on, they went and uh, reinforced and uh, they attacked them along uh, through Oria Quarter, through Yoruba Road and the rest of them. Everybody was seen. There are victims, a lot of victims, apart from members of the movement, other people in the streets have been shot by the police. You know, normally when they came out, they normally used to block road and deny access to other citizens. And part of our constitutional mandate is to make sure that there is free flow of traffic and movement of the citizens. So we went there, immediately we went there, they started, because they were fully armed, they started shooting, as a result of which they shot two of our police officers. And as I'm talking to you now, they are critically injured and they are receiving treatment in one of the hospitals in, here in Kaduna. Despite religious, ethnic and geographical lines, President Muhammad Buhari insists Nigeria's rapid development remains a driving force for his administration. President Buhari was speaking while receiving the Grand Khalifa of Tijaniya, Sheikh Im Ahmed Tijani Ibrahim Inyas, at the State House. He thanked the religious leader from Senegal for his support and prayers, underscoring the importance of a religious group in promoting good governance. In a statement, the president acknowledged the overwhelming support of Nigerians and the confidence reposed in him with an assurance that his administration stands for all Nigerians. The Grand Khalifa is in Nigeria to commiserate with the family of the late Sheikh Isiaku Rabiu, describing him as a great man and nationalist. And that's all from Abuja. Back to you, Millicent. Many thanks, Linda. In health, 10 persons have reportedly died in Niger state following an outbreak of cholera in four local government areas of the state. A total of 120 cases were recorded, with Bida local government having the highest number of 74 cases and seven deaths, while Kacha, Bako and Lavon have recorded one death each. Briefing journalists in Minal State Capital, the Commissioner for Health, Dr. Mustafa Jibrin, said the outbreak was reported to the Ministry on the 18th of June. The Governing Council of Obafemi Awolowo University, OAU, Leife in Oshun State, has dismissed a senior lecturer, Professor Richard Akindele, after finding him culpable of sexual harassment of a female student. Professor Akindele's dismissal has been confirmed by the Vice-Chancellor of the institution at a media briefing. He says the council had established that the lecturer had an inappropriate relationship with the student, Ms. Monica Osage. According to the Vice-Chancellor, Professor Akindele had admitted to the viral audio recording in which he is heard offering to upgrade Ms. Osage's score of 33% to a pass mark in return for sexual favours. The evidence, however, showed that Ms. Osage had actually passed the course with a score of 45 as later confirmed by Professor Akindele. There was an audio conversation between a man and a lady, which was sensationally trending on social media because of its explicit sexual tone. After thorough investigation, it was discovered that the said audio conversation was between a lecturer and a student of our university, OAU, who were later identified to be Professor Richard Akindele and Ms. Monica Osage. Professor Akindele's actions in requesting for sexual favors from Ms. Osage to change her examination scores was scandalous behavior 
that has brought ridicule to the name of the university and has tarnished the reputation of the university as it portrays the university as an institution where its teachers and examiners trademarks for sexual favors. Professor Akindele was liable for all the allegations of misconduct leveled against him. Accordingly, the Senate committee commended, recommended that Professor Richard Akindele, having been found liable on all the allegations against him, should be dismissed from the services of the university. Well, let's take you to River State, where as part of its corporate social responsibility to host communities, Belama Oil Producing Limited has set up a state-of-the-art firefighting infrastructure in the capital for Tarkort. The Executive Vice President, Administration, Human Resource and Corporate Affairs of the company, Rosemary Estiegu, confirmed this during the inauguration of the infrastructure and the 33 trained firefighters. The idea is to have efficient firefighting trucks with the right equipment ready to go when there is a fire outbreak. Belema Oil Producing Limited in Port Harcourt is considering safety first, especially during emergencies. The executive vice president in charge of administration, human resource and corporate affairs of the company explains that the facility and the 33 trained firefighters are available to provide services not only for the company, but also its own community. If we don't create the awareness, a lot of people will not know that our firefighting department will be available to people beyond Belema, uh, Belema oil facilities or staff. The newly trained firefighters have the certificates to show for their work. I am more than satisfied that these guys have reached that basic level. They can operate the truck and push water from one truck to another, from the truck onto the fire, and they can handle the hoses. The basic firefighting training that has been given to us, we are competent to handle any level of fire on the basic level. For the company, it's all about fulfilling its promise and commitment to providing a safe environment for everyone. The love the founder had for his people you know, is for Belemar Oil to join our voice and uh, providing resources, personnel, and what is in fighting fire. Officials of Belema Oil say the firefighting trucks are built to confront modern day fire outbreaks and emergencies in all situations, including RI's buildings. Let's go over to Business News where Kaede Kikiolu is standing by. You first. First Bank. Thank you, Millicent, and welcome to Business News. We'll begin in Italy, where a court is set to resume the corruption trial of executives of Royal Dutch Shell and Italian energy company ENI, alongside Nigeria's former Minister of Petroleum, Dani Tete, in one of the biggest corruption cases faced by the oil industry in recent years. The trial, which has been repeatedly delayed, involves the 2011 purchase by Shell and ENI of Nigeria's OPL245 offshore oil field, one of Africa's most valuable oil blocks. ENI's current chief executive officer, Claudio Descalzi, former CEO Paolo Scaroni, and chief operations and technology officer, Roberto Casula, are standing trial alongside four former Royal Dutch Shell staff members for having paid millions of dollars in bribes to former Nigerian government officials in order to acquire a lucrative oil exploration and drilling license in the country. And shareholders of Stambik IBTC Holdings PLC have approved the 2017 financial year statement and declared over 11 billion naira in dividend. Now, this comes as deposits from customers increased by 192.7 billion naira, representing a 34.3% growth year on year.
Over 5 billion naira is proposed as final dividend for the 2017 business year, bringing total payout to 11.05 billion naira. Uh, all shareholders voting in support of the motion, please raise your hands. Based on the vote, I hereby confirm that the vote to the resolution is carried. Thank you. Directors recall the negative impact the cut in oil price in 2016 and 2017 had on the company through a struggling economy. They are, however, impressed at the level of growth. As the year progressed in 2016, with the increasing uh, oil price, increased foreign exchange uh, distribution, the opening of a new foreign exchange for importers and exporters, new window by CBN, businesses grew and our company was able to take advantage of that, that we grew our profit after tax by 39%, so we are very proud of that. And if the government continues in the current economic policy, uh, inflation is going down, uh, foreign direct investment is continuing, uh, if we don't have any shock in the system, oil price is improving, so we can see uh, the business growing continuously as our plan is. Uh, the total return to a shareholder is the is the appreciation in the stock in the stock as well as the cash dividend paid. Clearly we have been one of the best performing from market indices. So I think the shareholders are very, very happy as, as you saw from the meeting. Uh, going forward, we also got the opportunity to explain to them our dividend policy. And I got the sense that they understood what the policy is, what they should expect so that they will be able to plan going forward. With a profit after tax growth of 69.6% and a net interest income increase of 44.5% in 2017, Stambic IBTC Holdings PLC is projecting a better financial year and 2018. Well, listed local equities ended midweek trading session in the red for the second consecutive session, driven by more sell pressure from short-term investors. Abisi Adebayo tells us more. Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Report. Further losses trailed stock performance at the NSC, which led to a 15 basis points drop in the main index at the close of today's trading session. The total value of equities also fell below the 14 trillion naira level in response to further profit taking from some bellwether stocks in oil and gas, consumer and industrial goods sector. Separate price loss had the highest impact on the oil giant sector performance and it also placed it ahead of 19 other decliners. A 10% price lead from small cap insure prestige assurance had little impact on the gainers table comprising 20 other advances. Meanwhile, investors traded a total of 267.76 million shares in over 4,700 transactions, with the shares of Zenith Bank, FBN Holdings and Access Bank as the most actively traded stocks for the day. And that's it on the Stock Market Reports. I am BC Adibayo. Thank you, Bissi. Well, on the global scene, major world stock markets recovered some grounds today on the back of deal-making activity and potentially improving trade relations between the United States and European Union. Now, let's take a look at the closing figures for Wednesday. That's business news for tonight. Thank you for watching. I am Coyote Okikiolo. It's now back to Millicent. You first. First bank. Man, thanks, Coyote. Still ahead on the news at 10. Morocco becomes second African country after Egypt to exit Russia 2018. That's in sports news. Be stay with us. Thank you.